Now, suppose you are given this kind of a x and y, and this is the scatter plot of the data in the x and y. Yeah. R value is to select the dimensions. Once the dimensions have been selected, you build the model. How good the model is? R square. Not even R square. We use adjusted R square. So imagine you have this kind of uh, data point scattered in the mathematical space between x and y. Now, what our algorithm is going to do is our algorithm is going to try out the diff. These are the different models that is going to try out. Of these different models, it's going to find one which is the best of all the lines. The best of all the lines is my best fit model, right? So the best fit model will do some errors. It will still do some errors, as you can see here. It's doing some errors, but this is the model which does the least amount of errors compared to the other models. Say this one. Or this one, or this one, compared to other models, all of them are doing errors. This particular line, which has been selected, this this line, it is doing the least errors. So, the condition to find the best fit line is that line which does least errors in prediction. That line is called the best fit line. Okay, what do you mean by errors? Look at this plot. For a given value of x, for a given value of x, your model is saying the value of y should be this. Let me go here. For a given value of x, say for example, say two seventy, your model says your value of y should be somewhere around right, but actual value is somewhere else. The blue line is the predicted values for given x. For a given value of hundred. Blue line tells you what is the predicted value, but actual value is the black dot. The difference between the line and the black dots. This difference is called error. If dots are sitting exactly on the line, for those particular records, the model is not doing any errors. But for dots which are sitting away from the line, for these records, remember each dot is one record in the data frame. For these records, your model is giving incorrect predictions. For given value of x, the value of y is this in your data frame, but your model is predicting to be this, the blue one. So the difference in prediction versus actuals, this is called error. Best fit line is that line which minimizes the error across all the records in the data frame. So you can have multivariate also. Same concepts apply in multi-dimensions. And blue line is what you get from the training data. Training data. In training itself, it does errors. No, I told you yesterday. Your models will do errors in training itself. So these are the errors in the training data itself. Some data points will be lying above the plane, some below the plane. Some will be sitting exactly on the plane. Let's let's do this. Let's do this. What she is asking is in three dimensions. Okay. So in three dimensions, in three dimensions, one dimension is going to be target. The other two dimensions are your independent variables. So what you're going to get is a plane. Suppose the plane is something negative slope. Okay. Some data points for a given value of x and y will sit exactly on the plane. Some data points for x and y are sitting above the plane. While what it means is for this given value of x one, give this given value of x two. Your value of y should be where it meets meets the plane. This should be the value of y, but your value of y is actually this. It's very much above the plane. So the plane tells you, for a given combination of x one, x two, this is the value of y you should get, but your actual value of y is this. This is your error. Right? Similarly, the data points can be below the plane also. If data points sitting on the plane are those records for which a model is not doing any error, data points sitting above and below, they are the records for which this model is doing errors. When the model is being built, you are in training stage, so you are working in training data. So all these errors are in training data. These errors are right now in training set. So in training set, it's going to find you the best fit line. So the best fit line is a line which does minimal errors in the training set. Okay, when we make use of these algorithms, 
will make use of a simple linear regression algorithm. That simple linear uh, algorithm will make only a straight plane. If I go for uh, polynomial features, then a spline, then it will create a complex surface. Okay, but be careful, the complex surface will reduce errors in training. Just go and check against testing because finally, testing represents the production data. So, if model performs very well in training, but in testing it bombs, then it is no good. Okay. Very good point has come up. Why can't we produce a very complex surface? We can do it. What we actually do in production is we always start with simplest models first and we gradually increase the complexity and see how the training and test error drop. At some point of complexity, the training error will continue to drop, but test error will go back up. That is what I showed you yesterday. That is the right complexity which I should have in my model. So, uh, zoom into this. So, these data points which have yellow lines over here. These are the data points for which the model is doing mistakes, erroneous predictions and the distance here is the error. So, in training set, your model is giving you say 80 percent accuracy. In test set also your model is giving you 80 percent accuracy, then you are safe, you are safe, right. So, usually in test it will give you more errors than in training, right. We can do that, you are all going one step ahead than what he asked. He said when you break your data into training set, test set and give large data to the training set and few to test set, would not that cause less error in training and more error in test? That is what you asked, right. Point to be, let us let's discuss this point, let us discuss this point, okay. Very important uh, point and you will get your concepts in place when you discuss this point. See, when we take from the universe, from the universe when we take our sample, okay. In the sample, we have taken certain attributes, right. Let us call this x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 and the target variable t, alright. So, yesterday I gave an example of time taken to travel from A to B is a function of so many points. We have taken some of the features which we thought were important for our analysis, okay. We took those features and built a model on this. Maybe in the real world, there are some features which impact the time taken and you are not aware of it because universe is dynamic. The time taken to travel from here to say uh, white field or somewhere today will be much more than it was say one month ago, so much of construction is going on. Maybe some new factors have come into play, we are not aware of that, but we are focusing on this and we are taking data from the universe. Which means between the target and these variable, there will be some patterns, but there will be some patterns in this data which is caused by other dimensions you have not considered here. There will be some patterns in the data set which influences the t, which is caused by other factors, but you have not considered those factors. Those other patterns which are caused by other variables which you have not even considered in your data set, those patterns appear as noise in our models, unexplained variances. If you had taken all the other parameters, these unexplained variances would have collapsed. But they are not collapsing because you have not taken those uh, variables account, okay. Are you all with me? Are you getting what I am saying? Now, when this I break it into 70, 30, when I break it into 70, 30, I am introducing a bias into my data sets. Whenever you take sample size, you are introducing bias in it because I told you yesterday, I showed you iris data set. Whenever you take from iris data as a sample, the distributions change. Even though you are using a random function, the way the three different classes are distributed, they change on the same dimension. Did you notice that? Whenever distributions change, your coefficients will change. The coefficient, the slope between y and the independent variable, they will change whenever your distributions change. Are you all okay? Why will they change? Look at this, these are all building blocks of machine learning, be, be, be aware of this conceptually. Original distribution of the data suppose was this between the three classes. Of this when I took my, when I took my, let me, let me take a simple case, okay. The distribution of the data points uh, between x1 and the target, the distribution of the data points was 
suppose centered around this, some value over here. When I take my sample out of this, the distribution changes. The x bars and the y bars, they shift. Whenever I take my sample out of the population, the x bars and the y bars, they shift. When x bars and y bars shift, your model shifts because model will go through x bar, y bar. What is covariance? Xi minus x bar, yi minus y bar. Your model will shift in the mathematical space, right? So when I do this, when I create a training set and test set, I am actually biasing my data because of which model is going to shift. But the assumption is, coming to your answer, the assumption is this being larger set, the probability that all the patterns that exist here is being covered here. But unfortunately, that won't happen. So you build your model on this, and when you test your model on this, the errors will actually go up. The errors will actually go up because your model has, I mean, adjusted itself to the patterns in this. Okay, and assumption is all these patterns which are there in the smaller set are a part of this. This is our assumption. But the random noise which is there, the patterns caused by the variables you have not considered those patterns will increase the error in your test. Usually you will find training errors less than test errors. Very rarely but possible where training errors is more than test errors. But they should not be significantly different. They should be very close to each other. We can do that. That is called, that is called LOCV. This sounds like the example she gave, <laughs> the spelling, right? Leave one out cross validation. We do that, okay? This technique, we are very far away from this, but what do you say we do that? Every time will not get covered because you're reducing the size, size over here. And okay, let me explain this to you. Can you do me a favor? Can you just hold on to this question for a few more minutes before I discuss something more important from which we'll draw the answer to this. But you have to remind me because I usually forget the questions which are parked. Again, it's light years away from where we are. So we'll come to that, but let me answer your question. Whenever you do any data science projects, one of the first things that we do in EDA, exploratory data analytics, which I'm going to take you through now, is identify outliers and remove the outliers as much as we can. We have to. Removing out because outliers can bring all the algorithms to their knees in production. See, uh, the moment you start adding more features one by one, you add features. This is called a step forward and step backward. There are two methods of doing this. One method is take all the attributes, build a model. Model is giving some performance. Start dropping attributes one by one. That is called backward step approach. Okay, the one method, one, the method that you are suggesting forward step. You start building from simple to complex. That is the method I use. Add one by one all the other attributes to this model and see how the performance is. When I do that, then in my, then I have to take you back to this. Where is that degree? When I do that forward step, then uh, I need to follow all these things. I do my analysis, everything. I get some performance, not happy, I add one more dimension. When I add one more dimension, I have to go back to the steps and redo all these steps again in the new mathematical space. I have removed it. First iteration, I removed it. It's not giving good performance. So I'm going to add one more dimension. The moment you say I add one more dimension, that means you're changing your original data frame. In fact, the, the funniest part about outliers is when you remove outliers, you get new outliers. So you'll never be able to remove outliers completely, 100%. So welcome to the world of data science. It is an iterative process. 80% of your effort will go into all these activities. We use a concept called regularization techniques, lasso and rich, which control the, uh, the choice of uh, models that you have. Okay, I don't control it on the attribute basis. That algorithm itself does it on some other basis. Okay, 
that algorithm uses an underlying concept called optimization functions where it does that. If you're interested, you can read about it, but it'll be too too uh, too advanced for you right now. It's called lasso and ridge. Unless, since you're talking about these things, I'm assuming that you already know all these concepts. Just go and explore lasso and ridge. Okay. L A S S O and R I D G E ridge. Ridge. Yeah. Lasso and we never implement a simple linear model in production. We always implement a regularized one, which is called a lasso or a ridge. 